Hey there, welcome to the show. My name is Jamie Zwier and I am the host of the Oh How Healthy podcast and the founder of Oh How Healthy Insiders, my signature membership site showing busy women how to simplify healthy eating so that it can fit into your budget and your schedule, not only for your health, but your family's health as well. I know that you're busy, so I'm going to keep these episodes short, sweet, and to the point. And without any further ado, let's dive into today's episode. Hi there. Welcome back to the show. All right. So we are at episode 60, which is very exciting. It's a nice round number. I hope that you've been enjoying this show so far. If so, if you wanted to ever reach out and say hello, let me know maybe a favorite episode. You can leave a rating or review in the iTunes app. Well, in the podcast app, but it's in iTunes. And yeah, I love all of your feedback. If you have any questions or recommendations for future podcasts, you can let me know and I can um, make that happen for you. So anyway, um, the title of today's podcast is The Most Effective Diet and What the Most Effective Diet Is. And I get questions a lot about what kind of diet should I choose, Jamie? I'm trying to do something maybe that will work for the whole family and There's many different things that can determine what diet will work best for someone, but we're going to boil that down to really just one main diet that I like to focus on. I don't even like to call it a diet, but pretty much like a way of eating that I like to focus on and that has worked for me recover from, you know, a really negative uh, eating disorder and that has helped me work with many clients and families and just get everyone on board with their new healthy lifestyle. So I found this time and time time again that works. And also throughout my schooling, I've been exposed to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of diets that I've studied and that I've probably tried most of the diets out there. And so what we're going to be talking about today is the most effective diet that I've come across. And so when someone would reach out to me and ask me what is the best diet, there is a couple different factors that go into determining what works best for someone, including health, like what, what's your current health, what are your goals, what is your current lifestyle like, what do you want it to look like, what kind of accessibility do you have to certain grocery stores and foods, um, and even things down to your blood type can help determine what diet really does work best for you. Um, And there's a book by Peter Diadamo that kind of goes into that a little bit more. But like I said, there's so many different diets out there and there's, uh, you know, a bunch of different factors that can help determine what diet would work best for you, which is great because there's so many different diets out there, right? And some of the diets, you know, some of the most popular ones or trendy ones might be, you know, keto or low sugar, Weight Watchers, vegetarian, vegan. There's diet shakes, there's diet pills, there's programs galore, right? It's just overwhelming even talking about. (laughs) And the thing is, is that there's more diets on the market than ever, and we are more obese as a society than ever. And so that's a little bit alarming and concerning. When you look at that, there is definitely something wrong with the way things are. Typically, when someone goes on a diet, they want to lose weight. And what I find is that what all these diets really boil down to, which is, you know, basic science is calories in versus calories out. So the average person burns around 2000 calories a day. That is why on the nutrition facts, you'll see based off of a 2000 calorie diet. That is because the majority of us will burn around 2000 calories a day. And if you wanted more specific information about that, just send me an email at jamie, J-A-M-I-E at ohowhealthy.com. And I'll send you a, um, a PDF that I use to help determine what that exact number looks like for someone. Um, because it, it might, you know, that number obviously is different for every person, for a man, for a woman, someone who's taller, someone who's more muscular, you know, so on and so forth. Um, But on average, 2,000 calories a day. So if you consume 2,000 calories a day and you burn 2,000 calories a day, like the average person, your weight will remain the same. Now, if you consume more than 2,000 calories a day, over time, you will gain weight. 
And if you consume less than 2,000 calories a day over time, you will lose weight. Notice that I'm saying over time because this is not just, hey, one day you consume more calories, you're going to gain weight. No, that's not it. it. It's over time. And we'll talk more about that in another episode. And so tracking your calories can be fairly simple. You don't have to get crazy about this. If you're if you're a new, a new person starting off and you're trying to go on some sort of program that's going to help support your health and your weight loss, you can track your calories easily. Now, you don't have to do something like this. However, tracking your food is going to get your results faster and it's going to help you identify certain triggers. It's going to help you be more aware of what you are consuming. So that's why it's helpful. However, I don't recommend being obsessed about counting your calories or, you know, making that your main priority. That's not the main priority. And so what the main priority is and what I recommend people to do is the food that you do choose to consume within those 2000 calorie or whatever your allotted number is, what you consume within those calorie amounts is going to be most beneficial. Now, whatever you do choose will determine how quote unquote healthy the diet is. And I say quote unquote because you know, that is such a loose term. I feel like people interpret healthy in all different kinds of ways, but the way that I teach families, when I work with children, this is boiled down to a very basic level, is that being healthy is consuming foods that are nutrient dense, that are whole foods, that are foods that come from nature, that are these really beautiful, rich, colorful, fresh foods. Now, That's not saying that those foods will not come out of a package ever because they sometimes do come out of a package. They have limited ingredients, uh, less than five ingredients typically, and all words that you can really understand that you know what they are. There's not some sort of hydrogenated oils or sugar or artificially enriched foods in there, okay? That's not what we're looking for. I'm not saying that there's no flexibility or room for that. I do because we all are humans and there are times when, when we will want those foods. Um, but if we can focus primarily on consuming whole nutrient dense foods within that 2000 calorie allotted amount, then we are on the right track here. And the reason why I say this is because for example, let's say you chose a vegan diet, right? And so you're a vegan diet, that means that you're not going to consume any animal products or animal byproducts. And so let's say you go out to dinner and you decide to have a beer and french fries. Well, that that's vegan. Is that considered healthy? Well, I don't think so. So is someone who's vegan, technically that person's vegan, are they filling their body with the most nutrient-dense foods. Not if they're not following that rule of consuming whole nutrient-dense foods, right? And so another reason why I love this philosophy and consuming whole foods and making this your main priority and way of eating is that when you shop for whole foods, it's typically a lot less expensive than buying these prepackaged, pre-portioned foods, you're buying fresh whole food ingredients and there is a there is a smart way to shop for them because for example if you were going to go buy sweet potatoes a sweet potato typically you can buy you can buy a sweet potato for like 55 cents right but if you were going to go buy frozen pre-cut pre-cooked sweet potatoes that's going to be a little bit more expensive so there are smarter ways to shop for whole foods but typically generally speaking if you do just consume whole foods you know um, eggs and and fruits and veggies and meats and if you buy in bulk and if grains and legumes and beans and all these foods they typically are less expensive than um, other other foods that you find in the grocery store um, and you will find that there's a lot of flexibility too when you consume just whole you know whole healthy foods Th- this does not have to be a restrictive or boring kind of diet which I know sometimes may seem that way because if you're like okay great Jamie I went shopping I grabbed some you know tomatoes and chicken and some peanuts and (laughs) you know what am I supposed to make now and there's a lot of fun really creative things that you can throw together which is why I did base my cookbook off of this philosophy which is why any meal plan that you'll find of mine inside of insiders is follows this philosophy too and the recipes are are a lot of fun kid-friendly family-friendly and really delicious foods that you would not believe we're healthy. And so another reason why I really recommend consuming a whole food as your main diet source is when you eat these foods, they're not as palatable and you don't typically want to overeat them or binge eat them, right? Like for example, when you have um, 
potato chips or cookies or crackers or little snack packs or th- of things in your pantry or your fridge, you typically can just sit and eat like a large amount of that because it's very potable, but it usually has a lot of sugar or salt, a lot of artificial ingredients, and it just tastes delicious, right? Like I'll be the first one to tell you, Cheetos taste delicious, you know, <laughs> chips, candy, it's all delicious, which is why I'm so passionate about teaching children to consume healthy foods because I swear I love that food because I grew up off of it. You know, I did not have a healthy household. My family did not feed me healthy foods. And I grew up eating Lunchables and Doritos and soda. And so I crave that stuff now, you know? And when you have that food typically around, you're likely to eat more of it than you would like to because it's so palatable. And that's not something that you would typically do when you have, you know, when you're eating apples or oranges or whatever it is, you're not typically going to do that when you consume whole foods. I mean, you might eat a lot of it, but if you do overconsume some of those whole foods, they are going to be more nutrient dense for you. And they're not just going to be empty calories, which are calories that have limited to no nutritional value. This is why I don't believe in diets. Diets are not going to be your answer. They are simply a band-aid solution to a much larger concern and it's no one's fault we've been given really poor information for so long that it's kind of a tough cycle to break so it's not your fault it's no one's fault there's just there's so much being bombarded to us right now like try this do this keto slim fast weight watchers gnc and it can be a tough cycle to break so we just have to learn how to make just smart choices from this point forward there's nothing we can do about the past we're gaining new information and we're going to make smart choices moving forward. So our the goal is going to be to, to consume whole nutrient-dense foods, real whole foods, and make that into our regular eating habits. And we want to watch our calories. We can track our food. Tracking our food is going to get us quicker results, although it's not necessary. It's going to help us become aware, you know, help us show progress and, and notice different things that are going on with our eating habits. These foods are not as palatable. We're not going to want to overeat them, and they are easier on our body. Budget. So it's kind of a win win win. So, in summary, the goal is not to go on a new diet, although I'm not against diets. You know, diets definitely work for some people some of the time. And if you have a health concern, you know, definitely check in with your do- doctor, figure out what's going on and what would best suit you. But if you are someone who's struggling to just lose some weight, you kind of know that you maybe struggle with overeating or portion control or just you just need a few tweaks here and there, then following a whole food philosophy will prove to be helpful for you. And not only are you going to notice a change in your weight, you know, by eating these whole foods, it serves you in so many different ways. You know, eating well is a fundamental care and need. And when we take care of ourselves in that way, it is such a loving form of self-care. And so you're going to see that when you're taking care of yourself, when you're following, you know, a whole food plan, when you're eating better, you're going to feel better. You're going to show up better. You, you're, you know, you're going to have more energy. You know, these little things kind of fall into place. Maybe you have a little bit more energy to um, tidy up the car or you're not your blood sugar is not spiking and plummeting. So you're maybe a little less irritable and you're, you know, maybe a relationship improves. So it's really magical to see what happens when we just take the time to focus on ourselves, on our self-care, on these fundamental needs. And taking care of your health in this way is really the most beautiful thing. And really the weight loss is a byproduct of all of that, which is really beautiful. You know, there's so many other benefits to eating well than just weight loss, although that is a huge part of it as well. So listen, guys, that is it for me today. If you want more help with this, you can join me in my membership site, my meal planning membership site, where we focus on whole food based meals. You know, I provide for you affordable grocery list, simple recipes, cooking demos, coaching challenges, and so much more. So if that's something you're interested, my membership is called Oh How Healthy Insiders. You're invited to join us. So click the link in the show notes to join and I will see you on the inside. All right, guys, I'll catch you next week. Bye. Thanks so much for being here, guys. If you found this podcast to be helpful, please feel free to share it with a friend, a family member, a coworker, anyone who you think could benefit from it as well. And if you would be so kind to leave a rating or review, it helps out the podcast tremendously. So thanks again for being here and I will catch you in the next episode.